What's up, kids, guys, gals, grandparents, aliens, werewolves, whatever the fuck you are. Uh, it's Chief from Spreadshot Games. As you can tell, the video description is kind of weird on this one, so I'll just jump right into it. Um, I took my girlfriend uh, to the train station today in Raleigh for her to go back to New York for class. And I figured, hey, while I'm up here, I'll do some game hunting. I'm not up here a lot. I know there's stores up here. I've heard of a lot of stores and everything. So I'll go game hunting. It'll it'll be nice. Okay, first off, why the fuck, what the fuck happened to play and trade in Raleigh? Like, I went to two places where the goddamn GPS said I was supposed to go. There's no play and trade. Call the numbers. They're disconnected. What the fuck happened to play and trade in the Raleigh area? I don't know, but it, they're gone. And it, I fucking went back and forth all over town looking for the goddamn places. And they're non-existent. So, that pissed me off. But what was worse is I'm going around this flea market, which is right next to the... Uh, it's on the fairgrounds in Raleigh, next to the veterinary college. And it, it's, a, it's a real nice flea market. There's some cool vendors and stuff. And I, b I bought a lot of cool stuff, but I was perusing around, buying some crap, happened to cross this one guy. Uh, he had uh, Dark Cloud, and I was like, you know what, I'll pick that up off of you and stuff, but do you have change for 100 Because all I'm down to is a $100 bill, which was some birthday money I had in my wallet. And he said, no, but there's an ATM... Uh, on the other side of the building. So I go to the ATM. I get out some 20s. I go back. I pay him. He talks me into uh, buying a GameCube. I've been looking for a GameCube. I really didn't want to buy this because I know at Player's Choice in Shalot, Myrtle Beach, I can get a GameCube with a damn Game Boy player for 32 bucks. So I was just like, you know... Like, I can get one with a Game Boy player for $32. He's like, yeah, but it's got all its cords. It had, you know, it's got a first-party memory card. It's got a first-party controller. It's got all its cords. And it's got a shitty Need for Speed game in there. And he's just like, you know what? Since, like, he said that, I'll drop it down to 25 And I was like, you know what? Piss on it. Sure. Whatever, man. I'll take a GameCube. I'll trade it in the... Uh, you know, player's choice, uh, get some money off, you know, a, you know, a GameCube with a Game Boy player on it and stuff, and I'll just keep the, keep the one remote, so I'll have two or three by the time I have the GameCube set up I want and everything. I pay the guy, it's cool and stuff. I do a little bit, or no, I do no more shopping, haha, -ha, key thing right there, and, uh, the thing is, I think what happened is I didn't. I know I didn't put the money from the ATM in my wallet because I was just going across the building to give the guy straight cash. So I put that in my pocket, and I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I did with my wallet at that point. I guess I had it in my hand, um, but I'm guessing I set it down on the table when I went to pay him or reach to get money or fuck with the bags of stuff I already had. But um, I leave. I leave the flea market. I'm driving through, and I find Ed McKay used books in Raleigh, which I know sells used games and movies and stuff. So I, burnt in the Ed McKay, cool place. They got a lot of neat import games in there, like Japanese import games. I don't know a lot about playing Japanese games on my American consoles. I'm pretty sure everything I own is region locked, so... I didn't buy anything. There were some pretty decent deals in there, but I, I don't know. It was it was a cool store, but I didn't get anything. I go to a place called Trade It right next to it, which is basically a pawn shop and stuff. So I'm in there looking at crap. They got some games. Uh, some of the stuff was decently priced. I did pass up a Suikoden. I think it's, I think it's pronounced Suikoden. Suikoden uh, four. On PS2, they had it for ten bucks, um, and I passed up a Xenosaga Part One uh, for uh, I don't know eight 
Um, those, those, like, those JRPGs type games, uh, I'm kind of interested in because other people are interested in them. I like real-time combat, and a lot of JRPGs are turn-based. Not all of them, but typically they are. I don't know. Somebody's probably going to rip me a new one for this, because it's just a stereotype. I mean, Dark Cloud's not, so I bought that. I mean, obviously I know what the hell's kind of going on with JRPGs. I want to get into more real time based jrpgs if you know some some really good ones please let me know because i really want to play that the tail series is really cool that new game uh nino kuni wrath of the white witch on ps3 that looks like that's like tails meets pokemon like and i've always i've actually personally i've talked to people like that be like dude wouldn't it be cool if you could play pokemon like you could play the tail series and stuff and that game it's it's gorgeous for one the graphics are beautiful and the the gameplay is nice, but I'm getting off track. Um, I find some pedals. These Dano pedals. Dano Electro pedals. This is a Fab Tone. And I, this is a Overdrive or Distortion pedal. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not a musician, but all my friends are. Everyone I know except me that's close to me, like my friends that I've had for a long time, are musicians. So I call my best friend up who's a pedal connoisseur, um, he just buys gear from music. That's, like, his thing. It, it, gear to him is games to me. He always says, he's like, I got gas. Gear acquisition syndrome. So I'm like, I got gas, too. It's just game acquisition syndrome. But they're Dan Electros. I know he owns two Danos to his name. He might own more. The guy owns ass tons of instruments and gear. And the other one's a cool cat, and this is a choir pedal. Um, I'm looking at the price on them. I'm talking to him on the phone. He's looking stuff up online, and he's just like, how old do they look and stuff? And he's reading reviews, and he's just like, you know what, for the price, like, I either want them and I'll buy them off of you, and if I change my mind, you can probably flip them for double the money of what you got them for. So I'm just like, well, fuck yeah, I'll buy them then and just sit on them and uh, flip them to like somebody that wants them and everything, because I could be patient. I mean, it, it wasn't a huge investment. The guy takes him up behind the desk, and I'm, hold on, sir, I'll have to go check the car for my wallet. Check the car for my wallet. Not fucking in there. And I'm like, at this point, I'm just like, son of a bitch. Like, I lost it at the fucking huge-ass flea market. Who knows who the fuck walked by, and it fell out of my pocket or something. It's gone. I call the flea market, no answer to the office or whatever. I drive up there, I go to the last place I was, I check my parking spot, and then I went to the last place I was, which is the dude that sold me the GameCube. And I asked him, I was like, man, did I leave my wallet here? And this is the story he gives me. No, you didn't leave your wallet here, but when I went and took a piss at the bathrooms, I found a wallet in the corner of the room, or whatever, and I turned it into the office, and stuff, and he's like, I didn't look in it, and everything. So... The good thing is, he walked me to the office, but this is the thing. Before the police or, like, security people could see who he was, it, from a distance, he just goes, there it is right there, and then he hightailed it. So, I stood in the doorway for a little bit, and they were having a conversation with somebody else, and the guy's like, can I help you, sir? I was like, I lost a wallet, and he's just like, what's your last name? Boren? He throws it to me, and he's just like, now there's only a dollar bill or two dollar bills in there. Did, are you missing any money? And I was like, yeah, there's a $100 bill in there. And he's just like, oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. He's like, I opened it in front of three people. So, And I was like, no, no, no. I totally believe you, man. It's legit. I was relieved just to get my fucking wallet back with two credit cards in there, my IDs, um, copies of a Soch card and stuff like that. Th that point, you know, it was $100 worth of birthday money from my family that sucked to lose and stuff, but it was it was nice that I, I just found the damn thing, so I honestly think I left it at that one vendor's, like, thing, and he took the money and turned it in. Thank you, dude, for turning it in, and also, fuck you for a turn in the butt if you took my hundred bucks. Um, I'm not saying it is you, but most likely it's him, but at least he turned my wallet in, so... Uh, I, I was glad to have the wallet. I was ready to go back and get the pedals, so I just I just got the fuck out of there, and and got the pedals. 
So, and they're, they're pretty nice. These are, is a, like I said, a Dan Electro Fab Tone. I don't, I can't remember what Josh said. I don't know if it's overdrive or distortion. Um, that might be, those might be on the same pedal. But, um, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a musician. I tried to play music multiple times in my life, and I pretty much suck. But they're in pretty decent condition. Dan Electro makes cool-looking stuff. I love the way their guitars look and their basses. But um, this is a cool cat. This is a choir pedal. I think they're both going to Josh. If he backs out on either one, he's definitely getting the choir, I think. But if he backs out on the Fab Tone, I will have it for sale. Um, just send me a message if you know anybody. Uh, go ahead and let me know. But these really nice Dan Electro pedals here. Also, I was at the flea market. Like I said, if I haven't, you know, first party memory card, da da da, da silver, try and trade it in, all that bullshit. Uh, picked up some vinyl, got Sesame Street, uh, Street. God, I get the weirdest, like, list going on when I make these videos. Sesame Street 1, original cast record. Uh, I figured I'd pick it up. We were selling for a dollar. And then I bought some classical music, Nutcracker Suite, and Beethoven Symphony Number no. Six. Uh, still sealed, but the plastics ripped. I like classical music, so I picked those up. The dude was doing a dollar each on twelve inches, so I picked those up. I picked up some comic books. I picked X Force Number no. One Collector's Edition up. Uh, I haven't checked to see if it's got the collector's card in it. But that was pretty cool to find. Picked that up for a buck. I got Superior Spider-Man, number one. The guy was selling them, I think, for a dollar cheaper than what you can buy in a comic book shop at the time. So Superior, Superior Spider-Man, one. And then I also got this one. And I found a Maximum Carnage, number four. So I'm getting to the point of completing my maximum carnage. And I thought I had, yep, one more. Superior Spider-Man variant. I got that too. So I think that's all I got at the flea market. Like I said, picked up Dark Cloud. Um, can't wait to get into that. I'm going to make this a two-part series. I have a lot of shit that like I've picked up. So I'm going to can it here and pick up. But wait, I almost forgot the coolest damn thing I picked up at the flea market. I had him back here because he's so damn big that I left him out. But I picked up a Revenge of the Fallen Devastator, complete inbox with tech specs. I uh, got this for my brother. This guy was fucking annoying because he would not shut up in the car any little time I hit the braces. But, um, yeah, right, asshole. Um, but pretty much anything what I've heard is Revenge of the Fallen toys, uh, are kind of sought after by collectors because Revenge of the Fallen, the movie, fucking sucked. So, but the toys line was, I guess, kind of revamping up. That's where you got your Optimus Jetfire combo and this dude and... Some, some pretty awesome toys, but since the movie kind of sucked, the toys didn't sell that good, and then they kind of got pulled off shelves and not replaced because they weren't selling good. Um, but the toys are cool, and so it, they're highly sought after by collectors. Um, I picked this guy up for cheap. A lot of ones, my brother was looking online when I was home for one of these, and I was looking online just for shits and giggles and stuff to see if I could find him a cheap one. And everything, and I saved them about fifty to ninety dollars by finding this one. Um, but he's a big Devastator fan. He's got two of them, I think. He's got a G1. He's got a miniature Revenge of the Fallen, and now he's got honking ass big Bubba Revenge of the Fallen. So yeah, man, almost forgot this one. Completing box with tech specs. Um, the guy that sold this is a really awesome vendor. Um, mainly because he didn't take my fucking wallet, but, um, 
got some cool shit. I've seen this thing built before in one of the vintage toy stores we went to when I was in St. Louis. Uh, it's really awesome sitting on a shelf and stuff like that. So, almost forgot about them, but Devastator, you're good to go. Say something. Say something. I'll break the damn thing. <laughs>